Hey, fish heads, Jen Kravasi, Jekyll Bates. It has been a long time, no see. Apologies. Uh, conflicting schedules really interrupts and, and makes a very difficult filming editing schedule. Lots of obligations, lots of volume painting for a couple of different things. But today, I hope you miss me too. I've definitely missed you guys. Definitely. Um, today we're going to talk about some depth and layering. Crappie are a very simple pattern generally to do. However, you can kind of make it look a little bit more realistic if you just build up your layers. We're going to start with big layers and then work into how to kind of texturize the rest of this bait. Cool thing about these gill wakes and 4x4s is that they're already textured. Mike always puts the scaling into his molds, which is fabulous. I don't see a whole lot, if any, do the scales the way he does on his bait. So you already have a beginning layer of depth. We're not going to go through what color choices I used for this. We're just going to talk about detailing and layers. I've got this uh, stencil from Brian Best that we're going to start. We're going to go from big to small stencils today. And this is your Jekyll Bates Quick Tip. I've got a jet black detail from Wicked Paints. And we're just going to lay in the very top. And it doesn't have to be super fine and very detailed. It can actually be a little bit hazy. And then we kind of build the clarity in. So you see I've got some that are very defined and then some that look like it's just a mist coming out. That's kind of the way I want it because I'm going to show you what's going to happen as we build layers and depth into this. I'm going to do both sides of this base. Also the top and back, even though the top is going to end up being very, very dark by the end of this pattern. And then do the same thing on the other side, just a general overlay, just a kind of a quick spray here with this Iwata Eclipse, this is the HPC Ace. So now, we've pretty much got the bottom layers defined. You can go ahead and do a little bit on the nose and near the mouth, just to kind of get up there. Bottom is okay, we'll come back in with some smaller detail. Now most crappie, if you notice, since they're sort of distant cousins, they do have just a little bit of an ear flap on both sides, so we're going to lay that in as well. Now we're going to build smaller. We're going to go to the next size down. He's got a bunch of these from a large modeling pattern, which is great for crappie, down to a very small micro pattern. And that's precisely what we need to get the job done today. So we're going to leave the bottom layer fairly open. And then as we work into the where the lateral line would be, we're just going to come and give a quick overspray and get a little bit more detail and a little bit more detail. Same thing on the other side. Just on the top half of this fish. And what we're doing is we're setting up a fade with a stencil. Do the same thing. And then coming back down with our even smaller stencil and come through in clumps. And really kind of making a darker base for the top of this crappie. And 
just so that it's really portraying what it looks like. Now you guys should see an image on the top of your screen. If you don't, you can yell at me because I've forgotten to edit that in. But this is an actual photograph of a fish that was caught where we definitely want this darker modeling. Now, with the small one, just in key spots, we're gonna go back and add some smaller detail in. Just maybe three mists on each side. One here, maybe one per joint section. Yeah, yeah, I said joint. As we go to the top, you're going to see the top of this bait get really, really dark. And on the fish itself, it's just about completely black. But I'm not going to do that with the stencil. I'm going to come back over with a detailed black magenta and add in that next layer because I want a little bit of a difference between the top of the fish and the bottom. So now we can still see a little bit of the yellow at the top. And we can see more of the yellowish pattern at the bottom. And we're starting to get that good definition. I'll go ahead and I did not tape over the eyes on this one, but I'll go ahead and layer those eyes in now. On the fish in the picture, it looks extremely dark. Something else that you guys can use, let me see if I can find it. I did have it right out here on the table. But you can use something like this and actually just cover what you don't want to get misted so you don't get all that overspray when you're going into the eye. And just use this if you want to do a black eye on a fish. Just kind of flip that. Yes, America. That's what I did. That's what I used. And that way you have a really precise eye. So, fun with stencils this morning, guys and gals. So I'm going to give this a quick heat set off camera. We're going to come right back in. On to the next phase. I want to make sure that all I have coming out of here is detail black magenta. And I do. Yes, it's still my favorite for detailing. And adding a little bit of texture into a bait. Come over the top, get this dark. My pressure is running right around 15. Let's see what we got here. 18. We got 18. And I just want this on the top. I don't want this to go all the way down and maybe just a little more into the cheek. I want that kind of rosy cheek color. And the magenta in this black magenta will do that. Sure, that's in the cradle good. If you guys notice that your spray is not coming out exactly the way you want, quick fix, and you've probably seen this on other videos, um, the guys over at Mega Airbrush do a real good job of explaining different things. But you can just lightly pull at the tip of that needle and get any excess spray that may have built up, especially if you're doing a run like this. Um, got a run of eight going right now. And then you should get a better mist coming out. The next thing we're going to be doing is kind of working backwards. You might question as to why we need to do it this way, but it kind of helps a little bit. I've got some pearlized white I'm going to put in the cup here. I'm going to build just a little bit of a color, just a couple of drops of this pearl lime green, some pearlized pineapple, and then I want to add just a little bit of gold. Let's see which one I want to use here. I don't know if I've even opened that yet. Yep, I have. All right, let me shake and bake. A lot of gold stuck here so we're not going to use that one instead 
I'll grab just a little bit of this pearlized copper. Just a couple of drops. And what this is going to do, if you're looking real close at this picture, and I'll shoot you guys a close up, a couple of drops of reducer, just mix it up. So you've got this real pearly pattern here, and with a very light touch, so probably 10 to 15 on your PSI, we're going to cover some of this with our medium size modeling scale on this stencil. So we're going to break out the medium again. This one. Make sure all the excess is off. Just add that right into the cup. And this is going to build that texture for you guys. Don't need to be heavy with this. In fact, the lighter you are, the better it might be. Well, this photo that was clearly somebody's catch was probably taken when the spawn was on for these crappie, because these are definitely breeding colors up north. So now we've got just a little bit of that pearlized texture back in. Get this excess off and uh, clear this cup out. We're going to go back to our large scale stencil. A little bit of black and then one final streak across. Just on the top section and the very top of this bait, back of the bait, if you will, head. Other side. And that really sets up that natural depth on this crop. Looks like you've got layers and layers of scale on a fish. And since we did hit a little yellow on the eye, let's come back over and kind of finish that one. So much easier if you're doing eyes that are already on. Now for this, it, it clearly is a very dark eye in the picture. So we're gonna be consistent with that, just make this a black eye on the fish. But now we've got our yellows built in. and the pattern has really come together. So I'm gonna heat set this off camera, then we're gonna just do a little bit of detailing on the cheeks and the gill plate. We have got ourselves a Northern String Black Crappie. So now that I've heat set this, and while I still have black in the chamber again, if you notice, when this fish is gonna swim through the water, you've got this very stark white contrast. It's not really gonna look natural. But if you go ahead, do a couple of extra steps, and put your depth and build up into the joint sections might be a little bit more believable. So what we'll do is we'll bring in this small scale and just set it with our finger behind it, lightly shoot right into that jointed section. You don't want to overdo it, and you definitely don't want to touch this bait while it's still wet. But this just makes the pattern that much more believable so that when it's coming through the water, all your predator fish is going to see is a crappie, not this white contrasted stuff. So always try and, if you can, put that in, build that into your pattern. just takes a few extra seconds and that looks so much better and we're going to concentrate on the gill plates very lightly very very lightly can't stress that enough
even a, a medium gray or a white mixed with a, a pearlish color yellow would probably work here you don't want it to be too contrasty just super super light kind of build in a little bit of character to the gill plates If you're looking at this, while I still have white in the chamber, there's a couple of different ways. I always like to do the tail on trout and crappie because they have those very distinct lines on them. So, I can either use this lizard pattern or I can use this pattern. Either one would work. I kind of want to see what this lizard pattern is going to look like on the tail for here. While I've got white, we're going to emphasize I've already shot black on this tail. These tails are a natural hair color when, uh, when Mike puts them on his baits. So you're going to think, what is she doing? But we want that crappie tail to come through. So we're going to add just a little bit of white. And then I'm going to free shoot a little bit of yellow, just enough so that the white picks it up as a color. have yellow back in the chamber here just very lightly coming over this white you can still very much see the rest of this behind it as a darker pattern so we're just gonna let that white pick up the yellow and we have got a northern strain northeastern strain bona fide crappie that's what I've got for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for stopping by the channel. I know it's been a minute. I saw lots of messages, Jones and for a spray session. This is what I've got. I hope that it's enough to get you through to my next one. I've got iCast coming up this week. So I'm gonna edit this, make sure it gets out for you guys this weekend. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it and I miss you guys. We're gonna try and get back into that schedule. We've got the whole rest of the summer and the fall coming and no more shows. Uh, we're probably gonna do a grand reopening out here in the storefront. Uh, we're kind of just building back up and I can certainly appreciate what Mike wants. He wants to turn over a beautiful, fully stocked, brand new, spanking new stuff for the storefront for you guys. So that's coming probably mid-August. Stay tuned for that. I'll have lots more updates and yes, ladies and gentlemen, there they are. That's the burrito wall, and it's going to be just for you guys. See ya. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.